in many ways, the first book was the Bible. I mean, literally. The Bible got it right. They yeah. got the order right. Right. Scientists have unearthed an ancient Ethiopian Bible containing texts that have long been considered forbidden. God doesn't exist. Human being is the, is the, is the measure of all things. Because if you think about the Bible, right, and if, if all these people are correct, say the most sophisticated society that we are aware of, which is Africa. What does this mean for our understanding of history, religion, and spirituality? And so it isn't that the Bible is true. It's that the Bible is the precondition for the manifestation of truth. All of us do things every day which are unreasonable, sinful, wrong, and absurd. Joe Rogan explores the significance of these texts, their historical context, and the implications they hold for both believers and skeptics alike. It's all mythology, it's all fake, but in reality, it's not all fake. These people left behind such detailed records and information. A dive into the annals of history would reveal the existence of sacred ancient writings documenting the events and lives that once featured on our planet. However, we would be blindsided to assume that embarking on this adventure into the past will be a smooth sail. As we're well aware, things are not as easy as they appear. This is because some ancient writings beat modern comprehension. These ancient chronicles are woven into a thick web of mysteries and layered with several shady details that leave us in eternal awe and stupefaction. The Ethiopian Bible is one of them taking us into a rarely explored side of history that unfolded on Earth before any of us were born. The Ethiopian Bible is a revered text that doubles as one of the founding pillars of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church. This historical text is an enigma in the religious world, as it is laced with a host of mythical stories and prophetic declarations that would leave listeners on the edge of their seats. For centuries now, the Ethiopian Bible has distinguished itself from other religious texts in the Christian world, and it is characterized by an enchanting depth and complexity that rivals its contemporaries. The Ethiopian Bible takes a different path from the Bibles used in Western Christianity or the Jewish Tanakh. The Ethiopian Bible is famous for having a broader canon than other contemporary Bibles and is peculiarized by its inclusion of several books that didn't make it to other Christian Bibles. Historians believe that these books, which can be found within the pages of the Ethiopian Bible, are the master keys to some of the puzzles that have lingered in the Christian faith. These books provide a new perspective on the early Judeo-Christian faith, shining light on gray areas we never paid attention to, and expanding our understanding of the developmental stages of Christianity. Reading through these exclusive chapters, we are met with puzzling and enchanting stories that force us to sit back and rethink preconceived notions about the Christian faith. Unlike some of its contemporaries, the Ethiopian Orthodox Tiwa Hedo Church has been around for a long time. A sneak peek into the voluminous historical texts that have been accumulated over the years attests to the fact that the Ethiopian Orthodox Tiwa Hedo Church is one of the oldest Christian denominations in the world. The church's history dates back to the early Christian era, and this explains why it has managed to maintain its relevance in the religious world till today. The church's Bible is a shimmering mirror that reflects its ancient heritage, as it has preserved texts and interpretations that are missing or have undergone changes in other Christian traditions. The Ethiopian Bible is also known as the Metzehafe Kedus Holy Scriptures and was initially written in Ge'ez, an ancient Ethiopian language. This invigorating language was the lingua franca of the Ethiopian church and the Aksumite empire. And as the universe would have it, the language is now used mainly for liturgical purposes. The early Ethiopian church might have never gotten their hands on this Bible if not for the selfless efforts of some missionaries and scholars who went out of their way to translate this Bible into Ge'ez. From the beginning, it was evident that this translation would require a lot of effort, as it was no small feat. Nevertheless, these benevolent religious volunteers were spurred on by the desire to make the scriptural texts accessible to the Ethiopian people. They wanted the Ethiopian people to have an unrestricted consumption of the scriptures, and this was only possible if it was written in a language that they understood. 
As mentioned earlier, the Ethiopian Bible distinguishes itself from other Christian Bibles due to its broader collection of books. Speaking from a religious perspective, the Ethiopian Bible has richer literature than other Christian canons. The pages of the Ethiopian Bible house several texts that are missing from the Catholic or Orthodox canons, attesting to its special status. Some of these missing texts include the Book of Enoch and the Book of Jubilees, amongst various other writings. This riveting additional text takes first-time readers on a jolly ride into the distinct theological perspectives of the Ethiopian Church and its historical connections with Jewish traditions. As expected, critics have raised eyebrows as regards the decision of the Ethiopian Church to tow a slightly different path from other Christian canons. However, the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church, which is the main custodian of this Bible, never fails to reassure willing listeners that these additional texts are integral to their Christian doctrine. The inclusion of this sacred scriptural text stands as a faithful witness to the Church's historical isolation and its success in developing a distinct Christian identity. The Ethiopian Bible is proof that the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church has always been in a world of its own. This is because their Christian doctrine wasn't influenced by the theological debates and reforms that shaped Christianity in the Roman Empire. This explains why several people believe that the pages of this Bible hold some of the purest forms of Christianity and its sacred writings. However, historians believe that classifying the Ethiopian Bible as simply a religious text is a myopic view when, in fact, there is a bigger picture in play. The Ethiopian Bible is also considered to be a work of art, and this notion is birthed on the foundation that the manuscript has mesmerizing intricate designs, alluring illustrations, and elaborate bindings. These features aren't a fluke, as they are evidence of the rich artistic traditions of the Ethiopian people. In Ethiopia, religious art is a staple artistic endeavor because it is considered to be interwoven with spiritual expression. It wasn't only the translation of the Bible into Ge'ez that required serious work. According to historical scholars, the process of creating the Bible was an arduous task that demanded immense dexterity for the laborers entrusted with this sacred religious mission. The craftsmen gave their all in this assignment, employing indigenous materials such as vellum from goat or sheepskin and natural dyes for illustrations. Gleaning through the pages of this Bible would expose how the artistry deployed by the craftsmen was done to depict biblical scenes, saints, and Ethiopian Christian motifs. The Ethiopian Bible is no doubt a charming work of art that showcases the success of blending indigenous and biblical iconography. The Book of Enoch The Book of Enoch, which is an ancient apocalyptic religious text, is one of the sacred writings included in the Ethiopian Bibli. This historic Hebrew text is a scribed to the Patriarch Enoch and has been confirmed by several religious and historical scholars to be one of the most mystifying religious texts in existence. According to Jewish history, Enoch was the father of Methuselah, the man believed to have lived the longest life on earth, and the great-grandfather of Noah. Historians have attested to the alluring grip that this boom has on readers, and have revealed that it is divided into sections, each weaving up a unique style and focus that is different from the other. Enoch is the center of focus in this awe-inspiring Judeo-Christian text, as the verses explore the heavenly revelations that the biblical patriarch experienced while on earth. The Book of Enoch takes readers on an exhilarating adventure as it contains hair-raising texts on the origins of demons and Nephilim and why some angels fell from heaven. The book also provides a riveting insight into why the Genesis Flood was of moral necessity and goes further to deliver a prophetic exposition on the thousand-year reign of the Messiah and what to expect during that reign. Surfing through the texts provides a deep understanding of the fall of Watchers. The Watchers is a befitting appellation for the fallen angels who left their place in heaven for earth, and their descent is immortalized by the fathering of the angel-human hybrids known as Nephilim. They married human women during their stay on earth, birthing the Nephilim that are recorded in historical accounts. This grievous sin on the part of the fallen angels 
was the spark that lit up the flames of the corruption of humanity and untied the knot of divine judgment that was meted out to humanity and the earth. This ancient book shines a light on the selfless spirit of Enoch as he acts as an intermediary between heaven and earth. Nestled in this exalted intermediary role, Enoch can convey messages and judgments. The doors to these riveting revelations are accessed through his visits to heaven in the form of travels, visions, and dreams. Furthermore, a deeper dive into the annals of the Watchers exposes the complex hierarchy among angels and demons. This eerie theme, scripted by Enoch, would later influence Jewish and Christian thoughts. On the other side of the divide, the Nephilim, which are the products of the sexual relations between angels and humans, epitomize the chilling corruption and violence that abounded on Earth during this period. Immorality was at its peak when the great flood that wiped out humanity, except Noah and his family, occurred on Earth, heralding a fresh start for humanity. Historians are yet to recover from the electrifying effects that the Book of Enoch has on their minds and imaginations. This is because the book is characterized by well-detailed illustrations that paint a vivid picture of the events that Enoch describes in the texts. Studying the stirring chapters of the Book of Enoch always leaves readers on the edge of their seats as their eyes feast on the symbolism and imagery of the end times that Enoch received via heavenly revelations. These heavenly visions are worthy of our attention as they provide an explosive perspective into the worldview and expectations of early Jewish apocalypticism, which influenced Christian eschatology. The influence of the Book of Enoch on early Christian thought cannot be overemphasized, and we see ample evidence of this in the New Testament. A sweep through the texts of the New Testament would show how references and themes of Enoch appear in this side of the Bible. We see it specifically in the books of Jude and Revelation, amongst other texts. A striking feature of the Book of Enoch is how the concept of the Son of Man is a familiar theme in Christian theology. If the Book of Enoch were to be a banquet, then it would be a very tantalizing and nutritious one. This is because the book is rich in the themes of divine judgment, angelology, and eschatology. As captivating and influential as this book is, it never made it into the Jewish canon and most Christian Bibles. It was excluded from those Bibles for reasons that are still unclear. However, whatever grouse the other Christian traditions have with the Book of Enoch, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church doesn't share the same sentiment. The Church has chosen to preserve the richness of this revered scriptural book for centuries. More so, this decision by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church is a reminder of the diverse nature of early Christian literature and theology. For centuries now, scholars and theologians haven't given the Book of Enoch an ounce of rest, and it is the center of their fascinations and historical investigations. The enthusiasm of theologians in drawing deeper into the wells of this ancient religious book isn't unconnected to its acute descriptions of otherworldly realms and future events when the world comes to an end. We can't blame theologians and historians for being hooked on the complex angelology and apocalyptic visions that are featured in this book. The enthralling themes explored in the Book of Enoch have birthed several debates and interpretations about its origin, context, and meaning. If we were to lean upon the guidance of historians, we would find out that the initial contact between the Ethiopian Orthodox Church and European Christianity can be traced to the early Middle Ages. Nevertheless, historical texts have revealed how these interactions were limited and didn't lead to a deep understanding of the Ethiopian Christian tradition. This impasse remained unsolved for several years until the 18th and 19th centuries, when European exploration and missionary activities in Africa became more heightened. According to modern scholars, the Book of Enoch is primarily divided into five distinct sections. The most popular of these subdivisions is the Book of the Watchers, which Western scholars believe was scribbled down in the 4th or 3rd century BC. It was during this period that he thrilling texts of the Ethiopian Bible grasped the attention of Western scholars. The scholars' eyes lit up in excitement at the sight of this distinct canon 
that set the Ethiopian Bible apart from other Christian Bibles. According to history, one of the earliest and most influential figures in the discovery of the Ethiopian Bible was James Bruce. The sands of time will always remember James Bruce, a Scottish explorer who traveled to Ethiopia in 1769. Bruce's sojourn into the enchanting realms of Ethiopia had been born out of the desire to find the source of the Nile. This was the primary focus of his adventure on the African continent. However, the universe had a more robust plan in store for Bruce. This is because Bruce's journeys across Africa led him to the ever-welcoming hands of the rich religious culture of Ethiopia and its distinct scriptures. After what can be considered a successful exploration journey, Bruce returned to Europe armed with several Ethiopian manuscripts, including a copy of the Book of Enoch. Imagine the surprise when Western scholars first caught sight of the Book of Enoch. As expected, Bruce's invigorating souvenir from Ethiopia elicited immense interest from European theologians and scholars. Specifically, the Book of Enoch had several curious eyes feasting on it, as theologians and scholars read ravenously and deduced new interpretations from this Judeo-Christian literature they never knew existed. Religious scholars found it intriguing how this text is referenced in the New Testament, but is absent from the Jewish and most Christian canons. Theologians were overwhelmed by excitement at the fact that they had stumbled upon a missing piece in the puzzle of biblical literature. As the scholars studied the Book of Enoch and other Ethiopian texts, they were forced to reevaluate existing notions about early Jewish and Christian literature. Theologians had no choice but to concede to the diversity of religious thought in the early centuries of Christianity. More importantly, they acknowledged the pivotal role that apocalyptic literature played in the development of Christian theology. Furthermore, the scholars soon realized that the Book of Enoch wasn't merely a historical artifact for the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. This ancient text had a much higher importance as it was a living part of their scripture. The Book of Enoch is used in liturgical contexts and continues to influence Ethiopian Christian thought and practice. As stated earlier, the Book of Enoch is one among a group of enthralling apocalyptic texts that are included in the Ethiopian Church. Another invigorating apocalyptic work that is worth mentioning is the Book of Baruch. The Book of Baruch. The Book of Baruch is an ancient religious writing that is attributed to Baruch, the scribe of Jeremiah, one of the leading prophets in the Old Testament. Nevertheless, the text's authorship is far from a concluded matter, as there have been several scholarly debates regarding who composed the writings in this book. Another subject of debate is the date of the writing, as theologians and scholars still have differing opinions. Some have suggested that it was composed between the 1st and 2nd centuries A.D., However, the most prominent theory is that the text was composed by Baruch, a loyal assistant to Jeremiah. The narrative behind the book of Baruch is that it was penned down after the Babylonian conquest of Jerusalem and the subsequent exile of most of the survivors of the invasion. According to Old Testament chronology, this period is characterized by chaos and distress for the remnants in Jerusalem and the exiled Hebrews. It was a moment of reflection for the Jewish people as they pondered the past deeds that caused them to fall under the mighty hands of God's judgment. The Book of Baruch follows a similar path to the Book of Enoch as it is structured into a series of visions and revelations given to Baruch. These visions are distinguished by their apocalyptic nature, foretelling future events. The writings of this intriguing book are littered with symbolic imagery and theological themes. If we are to go by the narrative of this book, Baruch is taken on a celestial journey, one that sees him guided by an angel through the heavens and the earth. During this journey, Baruch gets a first seat row in some of the happenings in the heavenly realm. The biblical scribe gets to witness the intricate workings of divine justice and the ultimate fate of souls, both righteous and wicked. For decades now, scholars' interests have been piqued ever since they discovered that the Ethiopian Bible takes a swipe at several exhilarating theological themes. A major component is the concept of divine justice and theodicy. More so, 
Theologians gain insight into the vindication of divine goodness in the face of evil. A closer look at the visions described in the Book of Baruch would reveal how they serve as an explanation for the suffering of the righteous and prosperity of the wicked, which is a theme that resonates deeply when viewed from the lens of the Babylonian exile. Furthermore, the Book of Baruch is famous for its eschatological focus. This area explores the end times and the final judgment. Reading through the texts, scholars are provided with a detailed picture of what to expect in the afterlife. The highlight of this theme is that it showcases the rewards of the righteous and the punishments that would be meted out to the wicked. It can be deduced that these descriptions were designed to offer hope and encouragement to the faithful and assure them that God is ever faithful. The descriptions serve as a testament to God's faithfulness in rewarding the righteous for their good deeds on earth and that divine justice is inevitable. Theologians and historians alike have agreed that the inclusion of the Book of Baruch in the Ethiopian Bible is a testament to the rare development of the Ethiopian Christian tradition. More so, they say that the Ethiopian Church deserves kudos for preserving the Book of Baruch alongside similar religious texts that are missing from other Christian canons. This is because they have provided scholars with a bird's eye view of early Jewish and Christian literature. The inclusion of the Book of Baruch has helped enrich the theological and spiritual landscape of the Ethiopian Orthodox faith. Consequently, the Book of Baruch isn't the only sacred religious text that provides a worldview of the early Judeo-Christian faith. There are other enriching ancient writings that provide more perspectives on key biblical themes. The Ascension of Isaiah happens to be one of them. The Ascension of Isaiah the Ascension of Isaiah is another religious work that provides a comprehensive understanding of early Judeo-Christian thought. The Ascension of Isaiah, which is ascribed to the prophet Isaiah, fuses themes from Jewish and Christian literature to provide an alluring text that is featured in the broader canon of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. This ancient work is characterized by the description of a celestial journey through the heavens and provides readers with plush symbolic imagery and theological insight. The Ascension of Isaiah is primarily divided into two parts. The first is the martyrdom of Isaiah, while the latter is the vision of Isaiah. The martyrdom of Isaiah is an enriching section of this ancient Hebrew text, and it's distinct from the other one by being more Jewish in character. This section highlights Prophet Isaiah's persecution and death under the reign of King Manasseh of Judah. In contrast, the vision section has a distinct Christian outlook, and it describes the prophet's journey through the seven heavens under the guidance of an angel. In this invigorating section, we see how Isaiah is taken up into the heavens and gets to experience the glory and majesty of the celestial realms. During this journey through the different heavenly realms, prophet Isaiah gets to meet several angelic beings and bears witness to how they worship and praise God. The account of Isaiah in this historical text is knitted with symbolic imagery that reflects both Jewish and early Christian cosmological beliefs. Furthermore, the ascension of Isaiah is rife with themes that have come to influence Jewish and early Christian theological thoughts. One theme that stands tall in this scriptural text is the disparity between the sinfulness and corruption of this earthly world and the purity that is the order of the day in the heavenly realms. This disparity is the long nail that drives home the text's eschatological message of the ultimate triumph of God's kingdom over earthly powers. Another intriguing theme that features in this enlightening Jewish text is the depiction of the Messiah. If we are to examine this from the Christian context, the text is seen as a prophecy that foretells Jesus Christ's incarnation, crucifixion, and ascension. Consequently, this messianic focus has succeeded in linking the ascension of Isaiah with the New Testament, especially when we consider the Christological themes found in the epistles of Paul. A swerve back to the Ethiopian Bible would reveal how the ascension of Isaiah holds significant status in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. The presence of this text in the Ethiopian Bible is the umpteenth proof of how much value the Ethiopian Orthodox Church 
places on ancient Jewish writings. More so, this text holds a special status not just because of its enchanting theological revelations, but also due to its role in the understanding of early Christian mysticism and eschatology. The Ascension of Isaiah is highly valued by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church because it helps validate the Church's position on asceticism and the spiritual journey. The prophet's ascent through the heavens can be viewed as a metaphor for the soul's journey towards divine union. This theme features heavily in the Church's monastic and spiritual traditions. Theologians and scholars believe that the Ascension of Isaiah was composed between the late 1st century and the early 2nd century AD. This period is marked by significant interaction and tension between emerging Christian communities and traditional Jewish groups. Scholars have arrived at the unified conclusion that the Ascension of Isaiah provides us with an expository insight into the development of Jewish and Christian apocalyptic thought and also showcases how early Christian writers blended Jewish motifs and ideas into their works. If we tread further in exploring the broader canon of the Ethiopian Bible, it will lead us to the doorsteps of another riveting religious text known as the Book of Jubilees. The Book of Jubilees The Book of Jubilees is another scintillating portion of the Ethiopian Bible. This revered book is also known as the Lesser Genesis, or Leptogenesis, as some scholars would love to call it. However, it is absent from the canonical scriptures of most other Christian denominations. Furthermore, it is sometimes called Little Genesis, or Kufale, in the Ethiopian tradition. This captivating ancient literature is home to distinct themes that have played significant roles in influencing Ethiopian Christian thought. The Book of Jubilees is an ancient Jewish apocryphal text that contains 50 chapters spread across 1,341 verses. This rare religious text is also a part of the canon used by Ethiopian Jews, where it is known as the Book of Division. On December 26, 1994, some shocking images, allegedly from NASA's Hubble Space Telescope, began to circulate in the news. Upon closer investigation of the images, NASA's scientists in the United States were taken aback to see what appeared to be a massive white city floating in space. The NASA team was in disbelief and unsure how to respond when these Hubble images suddenly became publicly available on the Internet. Typically, such images are only accessible to experts in specialized space science facilities, but now they were rapidly spreading online. To manage the situation, the U.S. government attempted to keep these images hidden from the public to prevent widespread panic or excitement. However, their efforts were too late. A photographer at Ellington Airfield had already captured pictures of the images and was showing them to everyone who cared to see. These images showed an incredible space view with towers, pillars, caves, and other structures resembling human-made buildings. One of the images also contained a blurred section, which caught the attention of Ken Wilson, a professor at the University of Florida. Using a magnifying glass, Wilson closely examined the blurry area and noticed it had an unusual shape. This prompted the question of whether the pictures were real or merely a production of a transmission error from Hubble. However, after much analysis, it became evident that there was no error in the image transmission from Hubble to Earth. NASA experts further confirmed that the peculiar appearance was not due to any malfunction of the telescope's lenses. Following a quick meeting, NASA decided to retake the picture of the space region where the strange city-like structure was seen. They configured the Hubble telescope with optimal settings and focused it precisely on the area of interest. The telescope quickly captured new images, which were immediately displayed on a large screen in the lab. All the scientists present stopped what they were doing and turned their attention to the screen. The previously blurry and hard to see section was now clear. What they saw filled them with a mix of surprise and unease. The image depicted something self-illuminating, resembling a city, but not like any city on Earth. Instead, it looked like a futuristic city from science fiction with towering, glowing buildings and an abundance of lights that simulated visions of another world. This immense city seemed to stretch endlessly into space, covering an area beyond human imagination. People began calling this place the City of God, with some speculating that it might be what heaven looks like. One NASA scientist even suggested it could be where spirits go after death. 
though such ideas sounded more like myths than real science. As the scientists continued to examine the Hubble images, they noticed more astonishing details. The city in space wasn't stationary. It was moving in a way that aligned with the movements of surrounding galaxies. This motion appeared to follow the same principles that underpin the Big Bang Theory, which describes the origin and expansion of the universe. Despite its seemingly impossible nature, this city appeared to be part of the universe, obeying the same natural laws as everything else in the cosmos. The story became even more intriguing when scientists discovered something unique about the city's movement. Imagine watching a 3D map of the distant universe on a massive screen. It seemed as though it wasn't the universe moving away from us, but rather the Earth moving away from the city. This gave the impression that the city was at the center of everything. Scientists even created a computer model to demonstrate how other galaxies appeared to be moving away from the city. The deeper they looked, the more secrets and wonders the city revealed, like a giant cosmic puzzle. Each new piece they uncovered offered fresh insights into how the universe works. This prompted everyone to think bigger and wonder what else might be out there, far beyond what we can see from our small corner of the cosmos. But there's a twist in the story. Some people believe NASA tried to keep this astonishing image a secret. Why would they do that? This question has sparked much curiosity. Many speculate that NASA was concerned that revealing the picture might cause global fear or confusion. It seems hard to understand. It's as if there's something significant we're not being told. These incredible images, capable of altering our perception of everything, were hidden from almost everyone. Now we delve deeper into this space mystery, where things are not always as they seem, challenging our understanding of the stars and the celestial bodies beyond our sky. A careful look at the picture reveals numerous small, detailed parts that make you question whether you're seeing just natural phenomena or something more. You can see shapes resembling tall buildings, large round structures, and even something similar to a castle tower. It almost seems like the photo is showing us a city in outer space, arranged in a strange and unusual way. This raises the question of whether this place formed naturally or if something else is at play. Shockingly, in these structures, there were beings that looked just like angels. Yes, you read that right, angels. Initially, the scientists thought they had discovered a new group of stars because the colors in the image were so vivid and intense. But it soon became clear that what they were seeing resembled living beings. According to NASA, these angel-like figures were a striking shade of orange. Reports suggested that a group of these angels was seen flying together. They were captured on camera near the NGC 3532 star cluster, which has existed for 3 billion years. Initially, experts thought the unusual signals they were receiving were due to expected glitches with the $1.5 billion Hubble Space Telescope. However, upon closer examination, what they saw was astonishing. These angel-like creatures were each about 50 feet tall, with enormous wings and surrounded by a sort of foggy halo. A person involved in space exploration mentioned that these beings had wings as wide as an airplane, with calm, round faces and expressions of pure joy. They seemed delighted to have their picture taken by the Hubble telescope, sharing smiles as if they were in on a cosmic joke. Interestingly, this isn't the first time someone has reported seeing angels in space. A Russian scientist who moved to the United States in 1985 shared stories of Soviet astronauts encountering a similar group of joyful, glowing angels during a Soyuz spacecraft mission. He believes there could be millions more angels out there in space. The team operating the Hubble telescope plans to continue their work. Now it seems that the governments of both the United States and the former Soviet Union might be preparing to share groundbreaking news that could prove the existence of angels watching over us from above. Adding to the mystery, this fascinating image was shared with the public just one day after Christmas in 1994. The timing for many is intriguing because why release this image right after Christmas, a time of goodwill and reflection? Christmas is a season filled with warmth, caring, and deep contemplation. People celebrate joyfully, spend time with family and friends, and think about profound ideas like love, hope, and kindness. It's a time when people are more open to believing in miraculous things, things that transcend our everyday reality. 
Releasing the image right after Christmas seemed perfectly timed to capture the public's imagination. During this period, people are still immersed in thoughts of wonder and mystery, making them more receptive to extraordinary stories from the stars. This perfect timing helped the story about this image spread rapidly, capturing everyone's attention. Whether the beings in this image are real or imagined remains uncertain. However, there's one thing we know. For years, there have been persistent rumors about NASA discovering something that could confirm long-held religious beliefs. Since scientists began exploring space, there have been tales of finding signs of something greater, something divine. Take, for example, a story from 2016 about a picture circulating on the internet that people claimed showed the gates of heaven in the middle of a star cloud. The accompanying story suggests that scientists were baffled by what they saw. However, this story was entirely false. The picture wasn't a real photo from space. It was artwork by Adam Ferris, an artist who uses a technique called pixel sorting to transform real space photos from the Hubble Space Telescope. For this piece, he started with an image of the Swan Nebula and rearranged the pixels, resulting in an image some people called the Gates of Heaven. Although it's good to know that Ferris never claimed his artwork was a real space photo, others later took his art and added the heaven story, making it seem like something it wasn't. In the quest for evidence of the divine in the cosmos, another rumor about a cosmic city awaiting humankind began to circulate. The story involved an image purportedly showing heaven, first shared by the publication Weekly World News under the headline, Heaven Photographed by Hubble Telescope. This piece was originally published many years ago and resurfaced on the internet in 2009. You might recognize Weekly World News as the tabloid at the grocery store checkout, famous for outlandish stories about bat-human hybrids or speculations that we all descended from space aliens. Despite its reputation for fantastical tales, this story about heaven caught many people's attention. The basis for this tale is shaky. It begins with real events, such as the Hubble Space Telescope being repaired, which was significant because it corrected an issue with the telescope's mirror allowing it to take super clear pictures of space for the first time. The story then takes a giant leap, claiming that after the repair, astronomers used Hubble to look to the edge of space and supposedly saw a glowing city floating among the stars. The picture accompanying the story was equally dubious. Colored in black and white, it showed what appeared to be a distant city or perhaps a large house on a hill under a star-filled night sky. The image attempted to enhance its heavenly allure with rays of light shooting out in various directions from the city. However, many pointed out that these light rays actually undermined the image's credibility. Critics noted that the light beams were a clear sign that the image was not authentic, especially when compared to genuine photos from space telescopes like Hubble or the James Webb Space Telescope, just WST. In real space images, Bright objects like stars often exhibit light lines known as diffraction spikes, a result of the telescope's construction. These spikes occur because of the interaction between the light in the telescope's mirror and structural supports. Each telescope's unique design results in different patterns of these spikes. For instance, diffraction spikes from Hubble might not look the same as those from the JWST due to their differing constructions and light gathering methods. When experts investigated the supposed picture of heaven, they immediately noticed inconsistencies in the arrangement of these light spikes. In real telescope images, light hitting the large mirror can become slightly warped due to the mirror's shape in the metal supports holding it in place. While this warping doesn't significantly affect images of large diffuse objects, it becomes apparent when observing bright points like stars. These warps manifest as sharp lines extending from the star known as diffraction spikes. These spikes are simply artifacts of the telescope's design and do not provide any information about the stars themselves. As such, the unlikeliness of the light spikes in the heaven image led knowledgeable observers to dismiss it as a fabrication. This further highlights the importance of understanding the nuances of astronomical photography when evaluating such extraordinary claims. However, there's an interesting twist by examining the pattern of these lines, you can identify which telescope captured the picture. This bit of science raises doubts about the story claiming the picture shows heaven. The image in question features nearly a dozen of these spiky lines. 
The truth is, this doesn't completely disprove the story about NASA discovering heaven or that the picture is of something divine. However, it does cast doubt on whether the image is genuinely from NASA or if it's something else entirely. Imagine if the picture from the news story really did originate from space. If that were true and we could prove it, almost all doubts about whether it depicts New Jerusalem or another heavenly city would vanish. Dr. Masson, who allegedly leaked the photo from NASA, claimed they captured the shot while aiming at a cluster of stars. It might take a photography expert to verify the photo's authenticity. However, a close inspection shows that the supposed city is surrounded by stars, suggesting it could be set in space. But here's where it gets tricky. The only ones who really know if this photo is from space are Dr. Masson, the folks at Weekly World News who reported it, and the NASA scientists allegedly involved. Since no one has managed to speak with any of these individuals, confirming if the photo is a genuine space shot is challenging. Regarding the timing, the Hubble Space Telescope indeed underwent repairs in 1993. Weekly World News reported that the fixes were completed by mid of that year, and the first pictures after the repair were sent back to Earth on December 26, 1993. This timeline fits with information from other sources which state that the repairs wrapped up on December 9, 1993, and the official Hubble site indicates that NASA published these new pictures on January 13, 1994. Therefore, the pictures must have been sent to Earth sometime between December 9, 1993, when the repairs were finished, and January 13, 1994, when they were publicly displayed. The December 26 date mentioned by Weekly World News falls within this window, making it plausible. Weekly World News first discussed these so-called heavenly images on February 8, 1994, and revisited the story on September 10, 2009. There's nothing in these dates that directly conflicts with what we know from other sources. Thus, while the timing supports the possibility of the image being genuine, the presence of the diffraction spikes and the lack of verification from credible sources continue to cast doubt on the story's authenticity. While their story may seem far-fetched, the timeline they provide aligns reasonably well with the real-world sequence of events surrounding Hubble's repairs and the release of its photos. Now, let's connect past space missions to today's space mysteries, illustrating how discoveries in space reshape our understanding here on Earth. On December 2, 1993, the Space Shuttle Endeavor embarked on a significant mission with seven astronauts. Their objective, to repair the Hubble Space Telescope. Over five days of spacewalks, akin to strolling outside but in space, they executed various tasks. They replaced a component called the high-speed photometer with something called CoStar, upgraded the telescope's camera to the WFPC2, swapped out solar panels, fixed fuse plugs, and replaced other components. By December 9th, their extensive repair work was complete. Then on January 13th, 1994, NASA unveiled the first batch of photos captured by the newly refurbished Hubble, and they were breathtaking. The images were remarkably clear and detailed, as if Hubble had been equipped with a new pair of glasses, enabling it to observe the universe with unprecedented clarity. This marked the moment when Hubble truly began to fulfill the lofty expectations people had for it. Now let's shift our focus to something equally fascinating that Hubble observed. Imagine gazing into the vast depths of space and encountering not just ordinary stars, but peculiar ladder-like patterns swirling around a dimming star. This phenomenon, discovered by Hubble, evokes thoughts of the legendary city of God in space, even though we haven't uncovered the mythical stairway to heaven. The sight of these ladder shapes around the star raises numerous questions and feels like unraveling a cosmic enigma. In addition to this, there's the Red Rectangle Nebula, also known as HD 44179. This nebula earned its moniker because when observed with conventional telescopes from Earth, it appears as a distinctive red rectangular shape. However, Hubble, with its unparalleled vision, has unveiled a wealth of previously unseen details about this nebula, thanks to its advantageous position above Earth's distorting atmosphere. The red rectangle has emerged as a genuine puzzle, reminiscent of the intricate and mysterious descriptions we've heard about the so-called City of God. This nebula is filled with remarkable features, including patterns resembling steps or perhaps a spider's web. These patterns are not mere decoration, 
They consist of gas streaming out from the star in an organized manner, similar to overflowing wine glasses stacked within each other. Hubble's exploration of this nebula has presented us with surprises about the workings of the universe, much like the complex structures of the supposed celestial city. Originally dubbed the Red Rectangle Nebula due to its appearance resembling a red box from Earth, it has upended expectations by revealing itself to be more of an X shape than a rectangle. This revelation challenges some of our preconceived notions about celestial phenomena, echoing the unexpected shapes and patterns associated with the City of God. Both entities defy conventional understanding, prompting scientists and enthusiasts alike to reevaluate their understanding of space and its mysteries. At the heart of the red rectangle, Nebula lies a dying star, shedding its outer layers and forming a distinctive shape resembling two cones touching at their tips. Periodically, the star ejects rings of gas and dust, akin to the unusual occurrences described in the City of God. It's as if both the star and the city are sending secret messages, suggesting a potential connection between these cosmic phenomena. This underscores the notion that space is brimming with wonders yet to be fully understood. From the intriguing ladder-like patterns around star HD 44179 to the legends of a heavenly city, these remarkable discoveries underscore the wild and unexpected nature of the universe. The detailed images obtained from super-advanced telescopes serve as invitations to delve deeper into space, urging us to challenge our preconceptions and unravel the secrets scattered across the boundless cosmic landscape. The true magic of this narrative, whether it relates to myths of heaven or not, lies in our continuous fascination with the mysteries of the universe far beyond our own galaxy. This curiosity is ignited and nourished by the extraordinary images provided by the Hubble Space Telescope. Now you might wonder how this remarkable instrument carries out its mission. Floating high above Earth's atmosphere, Hubble occupies a strategic position where it can capture images without distortion caused by atmospheric interference. It swiftly orbits the Earth, completing a full circuit roughly every 97 minutes. Hubble's primary task is to gather light from stars and other celestial objects producing incredibly sharp images and collecting detailed data. Its vantage point above the atmosphere eliminates the twinkling effect observed when viewing stars from the ground, yielding clearer insights into the cosmos. Although Hubble isn't the largest telescope, as its 7.8 feet mirror is relatively small compared to some ground-based telescopes, it excels in its mission. This is possible all thanks to its ingenious design and cutting-edge technology. The demand for Hubble's observation time is immense, prompting careful scheduling to maximize its scientific output. At the core of Hubble's excellence lie its scientific instruments, which serve two primary functions, capturing stunning images and analyzing the light from stars and galaxies to understand their compositions. This is similar to dissecting the colors of a rainbow. Positioned high above the atmosphere, Hubble detects various types of light, including infrared and ultraviolet, inaccessible from Earth's surface due to atmospheric absorption. Positioned in space, Hubble provides us with a perspective inaccessible to ground-based telescopes, unveiling new perspectives into the mysterious depths of the universe. Now let's delve into the remarkable tools and collaborative efforts that enable us to unravel the mysteries of space. Each new set of space images beamed from distant galaxies by the Hubble Space Telescope resembles the work of a sophisticated space detective equipped with an array of specialized gadgets. Among these tools are the Advanced Camera for Surveys, ACS, and the Near Infrared Camera and Multi-Object Spectrograph, NICMOS, each with its specific function. This includes capturing visible light and detecting invisible infrared radiation. However, Hubble doesn't operate in isolation. It functions as an integral component of a vast, intricate mechanism. Using solar panels to convert sunlight into power and relying on gyroscopes, star trackers, and reaction wheels to maintain precise orientation, Hubble remains steadfastly focused on its celestial targets. This stability enables Hubble to capture incredibly sharp and detailed images, sometimes fixating on a single point for hours or even days without deviation. However, the journey of data from Hubble to Earth is an adventure in itself. After transmitting its discoveries to a dedicated satellite orbiting high above Earth, the data is relayed to White Sands, New Mexico, 
USA. From there, it travels great distances, crossing oceans, until it reaches its final destination. The data is collected in a sprawling archive in Munich, Germany, storing the data for scientists worldwide to explore. What truly sets Hubble apart isn't merely its scientific achievements, but also the collaborative spirit that brings it to fruition. It signifies a harmonious partnership between NASA and the United States in the European Space Agency, ESA, in Europe. This collaboration extends beyond the sharing of tools and data. It embodies the synergy of individuals from diverse backgrounds working together, exchanging ideas, and contributing to our collective understanding of the cosmos. European scientists in particular leverage Hubble for their own research endeavors, enriching the vast understanding of space knowledge with their discoveries. The Hubble Space Telescope is more than just an object floating in space. It embodies the spirit of mankind's inquiry and cooperation. Thanks to its remarkable technology and the work done for it, our understanding of the universe has changed and many observations, once unobtainable, have become possible. With Hubble as our cosmic guiding light, we unravel the mysteries of the universe, a fragment at a time, as we perpetually push our boundaries and expand into the cosmos. Since its launch in 1990, the Hubble Space Telescope has served as a door opening to the wonders of the cosmos. However, its importance is not limited to obtaining visually appealing images of celestial bodies. In addition to being one of the largest and most powerful telescopes in the world, Hubble boasts a collection of instruments that enable it to observe a wide range of light from the visible to the non-visible spectrum. This makes it invaluable to astronomers as it can give glimpses into the most distant corners of the universe. Thanks to Hubble, we have learned a lot about the formation and growth of galaxies, stars, and planets, which has helped expand our horizons with knowledge regarding the history of cosmic events. Despite being in space for over 20 years now, the Hubble Space Telescope's mission is very much alive. Hubble has imaged more than a million objects in space and has contributed over 21,000 papers to the body of astronomical knowledge, extending the story of human understanding of the universe. Nevertheless, the journey of the Hubble Space Telescope is far from over. With each observation, it provides another piece to the cosmic jigsaw, giving answers to some questions, while posing new questions for the continuing search for the meaning of the universe.